from the Meriwether Post Pavilion in Columbia, Maryland, CBS proudly presents Julie Andrews' Invitation to the Dance with Rudolf Nuremberg. With guest stars Anne Reinke, Eva Avdokimova, Peggy Lyman, Sandman Sims, the Greengrass Clockers, and the Rob Isco Dancers. Gentlemen, boys and girls, Miss Julie Andrews. Already? Uh, all I said was for my second number that I would like... Oh, I get it, I know. I said for my second number, well, I've already done my first number, didn't you see it? No. You did. It started when the boy said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Miss Julie Andrews. Then I kind of danced out onto the center stage. I did. You probably think I walked out here, right? Mm -mm, that was a dance. Listen, I'll show you a walk. Are you ready? <clears throat> this is a walk. <sighs> That's a walk. And this is a dance, Jack. Oh, and it feels so good. You want to know why it's a dance? I'll tell you. Movement done in rhythm to a musical accompaniment, and that makes it a dance. Now, it's not a very great dance, but it's a dance nevertheless. So now you know the first thing about dancing. If you can walk, you can dance. Anyone can do it. Anyone can dance. Anyone can do it. There's really nothing to it. Take a little chance. If I can do it, anyone can. I was one of those rare people who was born with two left feet. Even I learned how simple it can be. You could do it front ways. Then you could return. Those are true and tried ways. Now you do it sideways. That's the way to learn. The way I view it, if I can do it, anyone can. Well, now that we have the legs going so smoothly, let's progress to lesson number two. First thing, you add some movement with your arms like so, and add a lifting of the knees like so. Next thing you know, your head begins to go, and your shoulders too, then do. Side kick, side kick, back front, flick, pull and slide, hop and glide. That's the way to dance. Anyone can do it. There's really nothing to do. Take a little 
delighted to be part of this wonderful show. I love the world of the dance, and I have ever since I was a very young girl. So, let's get started. Now, there's somebody waiting backstage who I think is the greatest dancer of our times. Yes. And it's not John Travolta. This, uh, this gentleman is a star of the ballet, and he is a most charming person, Mr. Rudolf Nureyev. to be here with you. After all, I can only dance, but Mary Poppins can fly. Well, that's true. <laughs> but I can't fly without my umbrella. And anyway, we're here to talk about the beginnings of the dance, and I know you have a great deal to say about that, so go on. All right, we'll start. Dancing began many thousands of years for a number of reasons. Number one, uh, to communicate. Before words were spoken, people used to talk with their bodies. Isn't it true that the dance in the old days was used in early religious rites also? Yes. You have heard of um, the Muslim sect called the whirling dervishes. I have. Well, their dance is a form of a prayer, which dates back over 5,000 years to the Egyptians. Well, is there anything else that uh, motivated dance in the early days? Well, if you promise not to blush, I'll tell you. Okay. Well, the famous three-letter word, S-E-X. <laughs> yes, one of the early uses of the dance was for people to attract attention to each other. one more reason that people have danced, and that is they dance for no reason at all, to let off steam, to have fun. They dance for the pure joy of dancing. All of the beautiful dances that we do come from the dancing that ordinary people have been doing in the streets and villages for thousands of years. In the early days, when people came here from the far corners of the earth, they brought with them their traditional dances. The Irish settlers, for example, put on their clog shoes and they danced their reels and their jigs. And before very long, the hills were alive with the sound of clogging. <laughs> The tradition is very much alive today in its American version as performed by the Green Grass Joggers. Thank <laughs> you. 
considered a Native American art form, does it not come from the rhythmic dancing of African slaves? Yes, but here in America, those slaves were not allowed to use their native drums, and so they used the sound of their shoes to express themselves. Tap dancers just have a language all their own. I isn't that right, Sandman? Uh, he said that's right. like a code to me. <laughs> it isn't a code, Rudy. It's a real language, a vocabulary of steps and movements. For instance, what was that step call you just did? That was the paddle and roll. Santa, show Rudy an over the top. Over the top? Yep. Oh and what happens when you put all those steps together? Look out! <laughs> forms the ballet and this is the place where a ballet dancer spends most of his waking life it's the rehearsal hall and here is where all the hard work is done so that when you see it on the stage it looks easy everything in ballet is formal and proper and everything has a name so let's start with the basics Rudy all the steps in ballet come from five basic positions would you like to learn them I would love to and I'm sure the audience will be very interested First position goes like this. Mm -hmm. Heels together, legs turned out, and that's first position. Second, you open leg to the side, arms go to the side. Third, we bring heel in front of the arch, mm -hmm. and arms so. Fourth, leg comes in front, parallel, arms come here. It's a very popular position to finish, for example, pirouettes, you know, to finish into the fourth. Yes. And beautiful. of course, fifth position, again, feet together, parallel, closed, toe to the heel, with arms here. Well, those are the five basic positions. 
Yeah, but the um, beauty of the ballet is uh, how we get from one position to the other. Mm -hmm. I first fell in love with the ballet through the music. I remember as a small girl outside my aunt's dancing class listening to those beautiful melodies played on the phonograph as the children rehearsed. And in truth, ballet is as glorious to listen to as it is to watch. The man who changed ballet music from mere accompaniment into great symphonic themes was a Russian composer named Tchaikovsky. It was Tchaikovsky who gave us the music to Swan Lake, the Nutcracker, and the wonderful ballet we are about to see tonight. I rather think you'll recognize the music, and I'm sure you will long remember the dancing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here are Rudolf Nureyev and Eva Evdokimova, who danced the pas de deux from the ballet Sleeping Beauty.
did was part of a musical number from a musical comedy called The King and I. Now, the thing about musical comedy dancing that separates it from other types of dancing is that it isn't just dancing. In musical comedy, the dancers also sing and the singers dance and the actors sing and dance and everybody has a fine old time. The thing I find most impressive about dancers in musical comedy is that they know so many styles of dancing. Yes. Jazz, ballet, Folk, ethnic, tap, you name it. They do it all. Well, that's because the music comes from all those different sources. Now, shows like West Side Story or Grease, they require contemporary dancing. Oklahoma uses folk and ballet, and Fiddler on the Roof uses ethnic dancing. Don't forget Little Me. Little You? No. Little Me, the musical show, oh. has my favorite number in it. Oh, I bet you mean that very jazzy one. Yes, and I love it. I would give anything to see you do it. Would you like to see Rudy do that number? Oh. In that case, stand back, Mama. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. For you, I've got your number. I know you do right out. You ain't no evil scout. You're all at sea. Oh, yes, you brag a lot. With your own flag. You are unsure. Like me. 
Changing something more comfortable. Tango on a dime for you, baby. <laughs> Got change for a quarter. The choreographer. The choreographer is the man who makes up the dance. He also teaches all the steps that go into a contemporary dance routine or a classical ballet. What he says goes. And one of today's most inventive musical comedy choreographers is Bob Fosse. Now, like all great choreographers, he has a very distinctive style. The young lady who's about to perform is a perfect interpreter of that style. She's truly a remarkable dancer. It is a pleasure to introduce the star of the film, all that jazz, and a host of Broadway shows, Anne Reinking.
version of the Martha Graham technique, danced by Peggy Lyman and prepared by Martha Graham. It is a classic vocabulary of steps that will, no doubt, be performed by dancers for many years to come. Martha says she tried to build from the bad, to use the past, but to move into the 21st century. And along with the beautiful dance forms, she gives us great insight into human emotions. And nowhere is it more evident than in her creation of seraphic dialogue, which is the story of Joan of Arc. In this excerpt that we're about to see, we watch the internal struggle Joan goes through to maintain her faith, even at the cost of her life, finally accepting her own martyrdom at the stake. Here's Peggy Lyman to dance the Martha solo from Seraphic Dialogue.
ever wonder how dancers remember all those steps? Well, they do it by numbers. The choreographer gives every movement and every step a number, and the rest is just counting. Watch. With music. Five, six, seven, eight, and one, one, two, three, four. Jump five, six, seven, seven, eight. Drop one, two, grab three, four, five, six, seven, going on. Eight. festivities there is one more thing you should know the dancers do at the end of every performance they sold their feet <laughs> no before that they take a bow now each dancer has his own special way of acknowledging an audience's applause as our dancers are about to show you first we need the um, help from the audience one more time
don't miss the animated Christmas classic, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, at 8, 7 Central and Mountain. Thursday on December Magazine, Sharon Lovejoy explores the sensitive subject of grieving parents after the death of a child. Then visit the world of a 12-year-old fashion model. 